It's another Mate here with Teacher Jenny. And please join me for another topic. And this time we're talking about hypothesis testing with large sample. Okay, we have here a problem. A workout program states that there is an average weight loss of 15 pounds for those who enroll in the program for two months. Another workout program advertises greater weight loss and was tested with a group of 35 volunteers who averaged a weight loss of 17 pounds after two months with a standard deviation of three pounds. Does the second workout program offer a higher average weight loss effect? So we are to test the hypothesis at alpha or level of significance equal to 0 0.05. So first off, we are going to, to state our hypothesis as what is your step one. So here, we are going to locate our parameter. Our parameter here is the average weight loss of 15 pounds because that is describing our population, which is those who enroll in the program for two months. So we will be writing, we have H sub O, that's our null, and then we have that uh, with uh, mu there equal to 15. And then we have alternative here, we have H sub A dot dot and that will be with the mu there which is greater than 15. Now why is it greater than 15? Because we have in there does the second workout program offer a higher average weight loss effect. So as compared to 15 pounds if that would be higher higher average weight loss so that would simply mean that your mu there will be greater than 15. Now let's try to go to step two. Okay, so we are now on step two. We are to determine the, the appropriate test to be used. So for us to determine the appropriate test to be used, whether it's gonna be Z-test or T-test, we are going to follow the diagram. So first off, we must know the sample size if the sample size is greater than 30. So we have here, um, another workout program advertises greater weight loss and was tested with a group of 35 volunteers. So this is now our sample size. So that means to say it's greater than 30. So that's a yes. Now notice you have their Z test or T test because as what your discussion on the T distribution is, as long as your, your sample size becomes bigger, let's say 30 or more than 30, your, your distribution there will be approaching towards your Z-test. So you can make use of your T-test or the Z-test. They are the same. So that means to say appropriate one to be used for this one is the Z-test. So let's now move on. So we know that this is Z-test. Let's go for our step three. For step three, we are going to determine the critical value. And since we are using Z-test, we are going to locate our Z value for the critical or the critical value on your table there. So first off, we need to know our level of significance that is equal to 0 0.05 or that is simply equal to 5%. So we look at 5%, that is somewhere here. And then again, we need to know whether it's one tailed test or two tailed test. So again, as I mentioned, you have to look at the alternative hypothesis for this one in determining your type of test. So first off, we know that your null hypothesis is mu equal to 15. And your alternative there, that is mu, which is greater than 15. So as you can see here, alternative hypothesis contains the same symbol greater than. Now take note on one tailed, if you've got the symbol for greater than or less than on the alternative, that will be under one tailed test. But for the two tailed, you've got this symbol, which is not equal to. Now, since we have their greater than, so that means to say our test here has a one tailed test 
as the type of test. So we will be then locating the value that will be the intersection of that one tail test and so with your alpha which is equal to 5%. So that is C which is equal to, notice we have positive, negative, 1.645. You will not be using that one. You can choose among those signs there. You will be choosing positive, negative. Now, how do we base our choosing? We will be basing that one on our symbol here because if you were under me, you will be learning how to differentiate or how to determine what type of one-tailed test is this problem having. That will be based on your symbol. If that is greater than, all you have to do is to look at the tail part of the symbol on the greater than and ask where is it pointing towards. That tail part is pointing towards the right side. So that means to say we have right tail test okay as the type of your one tail test so that will be our guide in which we will be determining the sign for our critical value so we will have our critical value with a symbol z sub c because we have this under the z test so we have z value but we have to put subscript as c because this is the critical value we have another value for Z later on. So distinguish or so uh, two, sorry on the word, to distinguish between the two Z value, we have to rename that. We can put the subscript C for critical value. So Z sub C that will be equal to positive because we have their right tail. So we have 1.645 that is positive that will be our critical value critical value meaning to say this is now our um, division that value will divide your rejection region from the acceptance region so let's go to the distribution here or the illustration we have our value there which is 1.645 so we have to locate that one here that is located on the right side because based on what we had a while ago, we know that that is right tail test. So we have here 1.645 that is somewhere located closer to your 2. And this is now our tail area. This is our rejection region. So we have this as the rejection region. And of course, if you are looking for the acceptance region, this is our acceptance region, the one that is not shaded. So that means to say, if you have the value in there on the not shaded, then that means to say, we are going to accept that null hypothesis. But if in the event that your Z computed from your test statistic will be under the shaded portion, let's say for example here, then that means to say we are rejecting our null hypothesis. Next, we go to our next step. So based on our critical value, we have Z sub C there, which is equal to 1.645 and that's positive. We can simply set our condition here in which when are we going to reject our null hypothesis and that is if you have there the Z sub T which is your computed value from the test statistic is greater than 1.645 because that is our critical value in which beyond that one is your rejection region. So we need to say if that goes beyond 1.645 to the right side or to the right tail, that means to say that we will be rejecting our null hypothesis. So we have there if Z sub T is greater than 1.645, then reject HO. So that is our basis for 
decision making. We can actually omit that one there. We can just simply say if Z sub T is greater than 1.645, we reject HO. So that is how you set your condition. That is your basis on your um, determining what will be your decision later on. Okay, we are now on step number four, and this time we are going to compute for the test statistic. And we've known that we're using our Z test. So we have Z for the formula, Z equal to, take note, we're using Z sub T here for the test statistic. Z sub T that will be equal to X bar minus the mu over your standard deviation over the square root of N. Now, let's try to find out the different given on our problem that we need on the formula. So let's start off with our sample mean. That's the X bar. So we will be checking where our sample is located. And that is more likely where the location of our average is. So we've got 35 as our sampled um, size in there or sample size. So that means to say somewhere here we can find our sample mean. So we have average the weight loss of 17 pounds. So this is our sample mean. So that is 17. Next one we have our information on the population mean. For the population mean there we have that one as equal to 15. Again population mean will always be coming from the hypothesis declared as well. So that's the same thing. And next one, we go for the population standard deviation. Now take note, the population standard deviation is not given in there, but according to the central limit theorem, as your sample size becomes bigger and bigger, Although you are not given there your population standard deviation or your population variance, but it is said that when you have the sample size becomes bigger and bigger, meaning to say it's greater than 30, your, your um, population standard deviation and your sample standard deviation would most likely be approaching each other. So that means to say... We can make use of our sample standard deviation there that would be taken in under the delta in there. Uh, sorry, the delta. Not the delta, but the sigma. Where did it come from? <laughs> okay, anyways. So moving on. So that means to say our standard deviation there is also the same as your three pounds, which is coming from our sample standard deviation. Okay, so we have here three, and then we need the information on the sample size. Our sample size is 35. So we are now going to plug in to that formula there. So we have Z sub T, that will be equal to our X bar, which is 17. We have there minus 15, that's our population mean. And we're dividing that up with our standard deviation, which is 3, and dividing that standard deviation by the square root of 35. So we have to input that one on our calculator, and we'll be getting the value for the Z sub T. And that is equal to 3.94. So again, we have Z sub T that's equal to 3.9. Four. And since we have here, we determined our um, Z sub C already, so we are now ready for our decision making. But let us first find out the location of your Z sub T so that we can figure out what to decide on that one. So Okay, we're, in, we're now on step number five on decision making. So bef before we decide, we have to pl plot your critical value. And so with the computed test statistic value there, we have these values from before. We have our Z sub C as 1.645. 
And then we have our Z sub T, which is 3.94. So if we try to plot dot on your curve, we have 1.645 somewhere here. And our 3.94 will be somewhere here. So take note, when you say critical value, this divides your curve into the acceptance region and so with the rejection region. And since this one is your critical value, this one automatically becomes your rejection region. Because when you say rejection region, that is always attached to your tail part. So automatic, your 3.94 is part of the rejection region. So that simply tells us that we will be rejecting our null hypothesis. So we, ha we can write our decision here since 3.94 is greater than 1.645, meaning it belongs to the rejection region, then we can reject our null hypothesis. So out from that decision, we can now conclude that therefore, the second, or that is, you can, you can say there that therefore the second workout, sorry, I keep on repeating that one. I noticed that. The second workout program over a higher average weight loss. In fact, so that is our conclusion. Because we are rejecting our null hypothesis in which it is trying to tell us that the population mean or the average weight loss there is equal to 15 pounds. And since we're rejecting that one, that means to say we agree that the second workout program there offers a higher average weight loss effect. So that is how you do your hypothesis testing. So that's it. So I hope you learned something from me. And please do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. And click on the notification bell so that you will be updated on my latest video. Thank you.